Hello again, my friend. This is Kambiz Nafisi, Meditation Master and a Guide to Self-Transformation. I'm now continuing a four-part series on connecting with yourself. In part one, if you remember, I talked about who the core self is. Who are you? What is your nature? What are your aspirations that never go away? In part two, I talked about what was it that happened during childhood, teenagehood, or later on that made you lose contact with yourself. When you lose contact with who you are, you lose power, you lose creativity, you feel like you're living a lie. Um, many things that I talked about in part two. This part, part three, I describe three different selves that you have. And in the latter part of this talk, I talk to you about techniques and approaches for getting grounded in yourself in recovering your authentic self. That is my definition of heaven on earth, is living from the center of yourself, from inside out, while you face the external world. Let's talk about your three selves. You have a little self, which I call the ego. The ego is the part with your first name, last name. The ego is keeping all the memories of what happened to you during childhood, teenagehood, college, and later on. Now, all the events that happened to you during those earlier years, the events are nowhere as near important as the conclusions and interpretations that you came up with. If you had a high school breakup, a failure in romance, the failure in romance is not as important as what you concluded. You may have concluded that you're not beautiful enough for love. If there was a family bankruptcy, you may have concluded that your family is not meant to have money, prosperity, and comfort. So don't focus so much on the events. Think about the conclusions and the perceptions you came up with when those incidents happen. Your ego is a repository, a reservoir of not only all the memories, but all the perceptions that you gathered, all the personal truths, your pet theories of what happened and may have happened. Because of this, the ego is a self that goes up and down with moods. The ego is wearing these lenses, these lenses that were formed in the past based on the perceptions that you formed earlier on when an incident happened to you. Therefore, the ego cannot live in the present moment. When you wake up in the morning, your ego self is looking at today through the lenses, through the perceptions that you formed yesterday and the day before. Now, let's talk about your middle self. This will give you a lot of hope. You, my friend, you have a core self. The core of you has never ever left you. The core of some people is super focused. Some of you are just really, really hard workers and you don't even notice it. You're just hard workers. That's a core character of you. Some of you, since you were seven, you would touch things and they would turn into gold. It means that you understand economics. I've had students who were seven or eight and they were seeing musical notes flying by uh, their eyesight. In other words, they were just musical. Understand, your core has always been there for you and your core, whatever it is, has never ever uh, defied you. It's always stood by you, even when you have wanted to unconsciously sabotage yourself. So who is your core? Is it a family man or woman? Is your core focused? Are you a super hard worker? Do you have faith in unseen energies like the God Force? Do you have courage when you're defending justice? Go back, review your life, figure out what your core is. That is the part of you that has never left you standing empty-handed. Now, let's talk about your higher self. When you were conceived in a single act of lovemaking between your parents, some 300 to 350 million sperm cells swam towards one egg cell. All those sperm cells disappeared, vanished, except for the one who is you. No matter how logical you are, my friend, 
you have to think about this. You, the one sperm cell that survived, which is you, not your cousin, okay? You are here because some unbelievably intelligent, powerful force wanted you to be the one sperm cell that made it. Therefore, you are here because of no accident. You are here because all of nature and a mysterious life force wants you to be here exactly as you are. Love your nose, love your figure, love your character. You are uniquely designed by a life force that gave you life at the odds of 350 million to one. That higher force that I was just talking about, that is your soul. Your soul and your core self, the part that has never left you, the hard worker, the protector of the family, the focused one, the natural businessman, the core self plus this mysterious soul are always with you. If you didn't have a soul, if you didn't have a life force, you'd be dead by now. Now, let's talk about ways of getting in touch with your core self, the center of you, so you can just live from inside out, so you can breathe easy under your own skin. Number one, meditation, daily meditation. Meditation reduces your brainwave activity from 14 cycles per second to 3.5. Those are called the theta waves. When your mind is extremely quiet, you, your consciousness, descends at a level beneath the subconscious mind. Imagine a submarine or a diver that dives beneath uh, an underwater cave. That underwater cave is your subconscious mind. That is the same as the ego that is holding some negative self-limiting thoughts from the past. When you dive underneath that reservoir of old self-limiting perceptions and beliefs, you can then see through some of your bad thinking. So when you meditate, you are not responding to your past negativity. You are not responding to self-limiting beliefs. You are diving like a submarine at a level beneath your subconscious mind that might be holding some self-limiting beliefs. Next, prayer. You know, when you pray, you're having some quiet moments of praying to the center of your heart. You're praying to your own soul. You are very, very honest. You're full of integrity when you're truly praying. It's a moment of sweet solitude. When you pray, you're very, very honest and you connect with the center of your soul the center of your heart. So daily prayer, even for a few minutes, will ground you, bring you back to the center of yourself. Next, how to get closer to yourself. Be with somebody who really, really loves you. When somebody adores you, when somebody loves you exactly because of who you are, believe it or not, that person might know you better than you know yourself. When you spend a lot of time with somebody who loves you, you can't help but get closer to your center because that person just knows who you are. So when you spend time with them, you just, you're encouraged to be yourself. You breathe easy under your own skin. Spending time with that loved one just brings you to your own center. Let's talk about other ways to get closer to yourself. In the Indian scriptures and the yogic scriptures, there, there's a word called dharma. Dharma means the best life direction and decision for you. In other words, what is your life purpose? When you're following your life purpose, your work becomes play. You lose track of time. You deliver very high quality service and products. You take really good care of your clients. You're very creative in that one particular activity. You're constantly interested about it. You're constantly researching it. When you follow your intended life purpose, you are following your nature and your God-given talents. If you love the sea and the sea animals and you become a marine biologist, you are in your nature, you are flowing. If you love children and you 
manage a kindergarten, then you are in your nature. You love those little babies that you're dealing with every day. When you follow your dharma, when you follow a profession, an activity that is well suited to your nature, you cannot help but get a lot closer to your natural self. Another thing that I recommend for getting really close to your core self, you must do self-exploration to get to know yourself. What are your top priorities in life? On which days do you wake up excited instead of fearful? What kind of activity makes you feel like you have spent time in a really, really good way? In other words, time well spent. What kind of a day is that? What kind of people and circumstances make you feel really at ease and you feel naturally like yourself? Do a lot of self-exploration. Get to know yourself. When you get to know yourself, you will know what is truly important in your life. This is my last, last point in this part three. A lot of people are distracted. They're distracted by social media. They're distracted by television, the world news, shopping centers, Christmas shopping. Oh my God, it gives me a headache. There are very, very few people who know what is truly important in their life. When you know yourself, when you completely know yourself, your talents, your aspirations, what kind of people you love, what kind of days give you energy, what makes you charismatic, why is it that people are attracted to you? Is it because of your voice? Is it because of your figure? Is it because of your athleticism? Understand what makes you charismatic and that's part of your core self. Once you do self-exploration and you know yourself, you must then come to the last point, which is figure out what's truly important. Sweep aside all distractions. What is really important in your life? Somebody might say, my wife and children, my life purpose, my hobby, my writing, my health, my comfort and wealth. Come up with five things that are the top priorities, what is really important in your life. When you brush away all other distractions, when you know yourself, when you meditate, when you live or know people who truly, truly love you because they know who you are, then you will get really close to your core self. Final, final point, living in the present moment. When you become mindful of this moment, you get really close to yourself. How do you land in this present moment really quickly? I'll give you three simple techniques. Number one, at the bridge between the two nostrils, just notice that you're breathing. Every time you just notice the motion of inhalation and exhalation. You land intensely in the present moment. When you're in the present moment, you have no old memories, you have no negative perceptions from the past, you are just here. When you are just here, you are completely yourself and connected. Recommendation number two, once in a while, watch your own mind. If you gaze at your mind and wait for the next thought, as long as you're waiting for the next thought, the next thought will not come. That doesn't make anybody stupid. It's called pure consciousness. Gaze at your mind, wait for the next thought. As long as you're waiting, there's no other thought coming. When there's no thought coming, you're completely clear-minded. You're in the present moment. When you are thoughtless, yet conscious and mindful, you are connected to your true self. Finally, uh, another technique for coming to your center and becoming present. Simply ask yourself, am I here? Am I present? Let's say you go to a restaurant with a friend and you're gulping down your food and you just ask yourself, am I here? Am I tasting my food? Am I listening to my friend? When you ask that simple question, 
you come to the present moment and you land at the center of yourself. Thank you for listening. In part four, the last part, which is coming, I'm going to talk to you about what it feels like to be centered in yourself. What does it feel like to look outward from inside out and have no envy, no jealousy, constantly centered in yourself. God bless and I'll see you soon.